Well, good morning. Today is Thursday, August 12th, and it's time for our weekly meeting highlights. And this week, it is about cooking up your confidence in the kitchen. But we always start off with my weight. Last week, I didn't share my weight because I took a bye week because I was on vacation. I think my shirt pretty much sums up exactly what I'm feeling. But let's see how I did. I gained 5.8 pounds in two weeks. That just shows you how quick I can put weight on. I think I, how quick anybody can put weight on when they don't really track. Um, I did track when I was on vacation, but I ate out more than I wanted. Not, not more than I wanted to <clears throat> take those words back in my mouth. I would have liked to have eaten out every day. My plan was I was only going to eat out once. I ended up, I ate out because I consider even bringing food home from carryout places eating out. I ate out three times. I, and I had ice cream twice. I was only going to have ice cream once, and I had ice cream twice. And uh, I did have a slice of uh, banana cream pie. I understand completely, completely why I gained 5.8 pounds. Um, but in my defense, I gained more than 5.8 pounds. Uh, if you watch my daily vlog, uh, on Monday, I decided because I, I kind of thought I had a gain when I came back from vacation. Kind of like thinking I had a pound or two gain. Not really thinking back to how much I really did eat because I did eat well, well obviously, 5.8 pounds. I, I guess I did eat well. Um, but um, I made some smart, I thought, smarter choices in the morning. But uh, as you can see, no. I had pizza twice. I had a fish and chip dinner once. I had banana split twice. I had banana cream pie. So, I mean, it's not surprising because at my age, just one banana split's going to put weight on, let alone two. And, um, but you know what? Through it all, if I had to do the whole week over, I know I would do the exact same thing because I was on vacation. It's one week out of 52, and um, I'm going to get it off. But like I said, on Monday, uh, I was kind of feeling like over the weekend I should weigh, maybe not weigh, and I had a binge weekend. I had a lost weekend. I've had those in the past, but I really had a lost weekend. And when I weighed myself on Monday, which I didn't share on my daily vlog, I just went, because ah! I couldn't believe it, uh, I had gone, gained... 11 pounds, 11 pounds in two weeks, not even two weeks. It was 10 days, not even 10, 10 days. I gained 11 pounds. That was a pound a day. <laughs> that was enough of a shocker on Monday to reel me in as my grandson Sebastian kept trying to catch a fish the whole time we were, we were there. Um, he never caught a fish. Come to find out why he didn't catch a fish is he never put any bait on his hook. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't. There was minnows everywhere. He could have got all kinds of minnows. But anyway, um, but I had gained 11 pounds on Monday. So losing 5.8, or not losing, oh, really, gaining 5.8 this week was kind of like a blessing because that means that since Monday, I lost 5.2 pounds, right? Six from 11 is five. Yeah, 5.2. Yeah, 5.2 pounds since um, Monday. Uh, now, granted, a lot of that 11 pounds was probably just a sodium gain from all the crap I ate over the weekend. But uh, I was fully expecting to get on the scale today to see like an eight or nine pound gain. So only a 5.8. And I know I might say only to me, 5.8. I'll get that off. <clears throat> I'm back on track. If you've been watching my daily vlogs, you see that I am back on track. I am back tracking. Um, my goal for the month of August is portion sizes and uh, to cut back on my portions because I, I have my portion sizes are way too large. And uh, <clears throat> for the coming week, since it's my new weigh-in weigh -in day, weigh-in day today, my uh, plan is for me to start eating three small meals with two snacks rather than two ginor ginormous meals. Um, I really think that my body needs a little bit more time to get rid of all the extra calories that I'm eating. And I have to stop eating like a 300-pound woman because I'm no longer 300 pounds. <clears throat> anyway, enough of that. Well, we like almost five minutes in and I was rattling on about that. But today it's to cook up your confidence in the kitchen. I don't find a problem with this. 
obviously I gained 5.8 pounds this week. Uh, I consider myself a pretty good cook. One of my better qualities as far as my cook, cooking skills are, and my children will tell you this and they'll attest to this, is I can prepare like a really big course meal, like a Thanksgiving meal. I do it all on my own. I do it all by myself. And I get everything, we eat buffet style, my family. I get everything on the counter in the serving dishes, not in the pans, in serving dishes. And everything is hot. I can time food perfectly and get it all together. Uh, we're having family dinner tonight. Uh, I haven't had one in a while. Uh, only because of the schedules of, of everybody and the you know pandemic and all that. I'm hoping that we're not going to, even if we go into a shutdown again, um, my family is fully vaccinated, so we can still get together. But I really miss my family dinners. And so we're having a family dinner today. We're having a barbecue. So it's going to be kind of hard to rein in my points because I'm having all my favorites. So check into my daily vlog to see what my favorites are. Uh, I'll have that posted tonight by probably 9 o'clock. But, um, and you'll see my family if, if you like seeing that kind of stuff. But anyway, I do have a little bit, I have a lot of confidence in the kitchen. So it tells you whether you're a skilled chef or you use your oven for storage. Well, I use my oven for storage, but I also use it for cooking. It never hurts to, it never hurts to boost your cooking confidence. There's more exciting and self-sufficient ways that you can feel more at ease in the kitchen. Um, I just bought an air fryer but uh, we opted to get a toaster oven air fryer because we, we will use a toaster oven more than we will use an air fryer. Uh, I don't know very many um, air frying recipes, but um, I plan on trying this. Uh, I've been watching and I've been writing down and copying recipes from recipes with Roy's been doing a lot of recipes. Kim over at a girl on her phone does recipes all the time. Um, Jones pointed plate. Uh, Picked out a couple of her recipes and printed them off that I'm going to try this month. A dish with D always like figures out a way to have like your favorites and to lower your points. D, I'm still waiting to uh, get to my hundred pounds because she's going to make my famous turtle cake low point for me once once I reach my hundred pounds. Uh, my turtle cake is a chocolate cake with buttercream frosting that's dripping with fudge and caramel. <laughs> It's delicious. But anyway, um, but I follow all of those because those are, they're, they're very good cooks. There's a lot of other people. Weight Watchers with Carrie has been showing a lot of different uh, recipes too. Um, I'll leave links to their channels. Go over to their channels and subscribe and you will be disappointed because I'm, I'm sure you already follow all of those channels. Um, but so many great recipes. So many great recipes. But anyway, yeah, they're very skilled cooks. They really are. Uh, but anyway, whether you want to grill, steam, air fry, they're the three healthier choices of uh, cooking that don't require a lot of added fats and oils, which makes sticking to your budget easier. And they're, when they're talking about budget, they're talking about your your uh, weight budget, you know, like your food budget that you're going to have during the day, not your budget to go to the store. But in the, in the same sense, uh, you're not wasting a lot of food because you're learning how to make it a little bit healthier because sometimes you might make that unhealthy meal and then rather than save it, because you know it was an unhealthy meal, you toss it, and so you kind of lose that. But if you make a healthy meal and really enjoy it and save it, um, I've been doing that a lot lately. Is I because Jim, my husband, is not on Weight Watchers. I've been trying to sneak some recipes in on him. He has a few that he likes, and I have a few that he doesn't. But um, I always make another little portion size for myself because Jim. Um, in the winter works afternoons and so I eat a lot of my meals on my own. So it's just an easy quick meal that I can pop out and pop into either the air fryer or the, the uh, broiler oven part of it. So, um, but there's, there's so many things that you can do. I mean, there really is yeah, a lot of people just don't have confidence. Some people, no matter what they do, my sister Sue, bless her heart. She's passed. She passed in 2015 was a terrible cook and she'll even tell you she was a terrible cook. But she made this Mexican five dip sa uh, Mexican uh, dip salad that she made that she always brought for um, like a, our potlucks, and she gave me the recipe before she passed. And I make it all the time, and I always think of Sue. But you know what? I, it doesn't taste as good as Sue's. I, but you know, it's it's pretty good. It really is pretty good. But anyway, if you're ready to uh, build a total be a total pro, try this to build up your confidence in the kitchen. Practice healthy techniques below and head to the Weight Watcher app for tons of great recipes. Now, this is the problem I have with the Weight Watcher app as far as the recipes go. 
Um, a lot of times, I mean, you can find them, but I think for the most part, they show you a bigger portion sizes because I figure they, they figure you're feeding a family. Um, and you can cut it back somewhat, but it kind of sometimes I think takes away from the recipe. I don't think they show very many recipes for like single people or people that are um, just couples, whether they're newly married or like me, empty, empty nesters. Although I'm never, I don't consider myself an empty nester because I've always got somebody here. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, they should make recipes geared a little bit more for um, less servings. But anyway, there's there's three styles of cooking. There's grilling, steaming, and air frying. I'm just getting into the air frying now. Um, I did some air fried potatoes the other day, which I absolutely loved. Jim did not. So um, I'll do them again for me, but I'll do his potato a little bit different. I don't mind the extra step uh, cooking for Jim because it's not really that much difference. I mean, instead of air frying my potatoes, I'll boil them. It's about the same amount of time because my air frying potatoes took 20 minutes. To boil a potato takes about 20 minutes, not even that. So I can do that. Um, <clears throat> I do steam my vegetables. A lot of time, my asparagus, what I do, the way I steam my uh, my uh, vegetables when I do do it, especially my asparagus, is I'll put it in a, a colander and I'll put it over the potato pan. So the steam from the potatoes goes through to the vegetables and I steam the vegetables at the same time. I know you can put them in the microwave and that. I always just do it on the stove like that. And as far as grilling goes, I like a grilled burger or a grilled steak. Um, I'm not a really big fan of grilled chicken that I cook myself. If I go to a restaurant, I like a grilled piece of chicken, but I, I have a, a George Foreman grill that I like that I cook on that uh, it's just okay. You know, but uh, Jim cannot grill. Don't shh, don't tell him. It's a secret just between us. Uh, he burns the outside of the burger and they're inside they're raw. I have bought him a thermometer now because the chicken, I would never let him grill the chicken because you'd cut into it and the blood would come on the plate. But the outside of the chicken would be burnt to a crisper. It would be a barbecued piece of chicken but until you cut into it. But uh, I have to say, since I bought him the thermometer, I, I don't have any problems with that. So that's... Always invest in a good thermometer, too, because that always helps you out, too. Um, the things that you can grill are meat, seafood, veggies, or fruit. Now, I've never grilled fruit, but Joan at Joan's Point at Plate did a watermelon thing that she grilled one time. That did look pretty good. Um, I've never grilled veggies, although, and not even corn on the cob. I know a lot of people grill corn on the cob. I've never grilled any kind of veggies. And obviously meat. I've always grilled meat. Uh, as far as steaming, like I said, the veggies I've done. I've done broccoli. I've done spinach. No, I haven't done spinach. I take that back. I've done broccoli. I've done cauliflower. I've done asparagus. I have tried green beans. I like a boiled green bean better than a steamed green bean. Uh, and as far as shellfish, I don't like shellfish. So uh, I've never grilled. I've never steamed any kind of fish of any kind. And the air fry, you can do chicken, potatoes, vegetables, seafood, or meat. The only thing I've done so far are the potatoes, but I do plan on checking out some recipes to uh, figure out how to do that a little bit better. And so it says, whether you're a whiz in the kitchen or you use your oven for storage, there's always room to make your cooking confidence up a notch or even more. The more self-efficiency you have in yourself to prepare healthy meals, the more likely you are to do it and keep doing it. Very true. Working on how you feel in the kitchen is a definite bonus for losing or maintaining weight. But healthy eating isn't just about picking foods in a nutrition would fawn over. It's about how you prepare it. You can have the nicest piece of steak. It could be like gorgeous looking and then you can cook it too long or not enough or something and you can really ruin it. Um, it's, it's, prepare, it's like how you prepare it beforehand, how you marinate it. Um, all of those things make a difference in how you're, you're grilling and you're cooking. Obviously your seasonings make a difference. And it, sometimes it's just... Uh, you know, try it and learn it type of technique. Um, my mother taught us very early how to cook. Uh, all of us, all my whole family, my sister, my five brothers and sisters, we all know how to cook just about everything. My children, when they were old enough to be safely up against the stove, learned how to cook. Um, I would say that all, five, all three of my children are very good cooks. Christy is an excellent cook. I love going to her house for dinner because she's, she's very good. Uh, my Son Jimmy, we have this little thing about his eggs. They look nasty, but he loves his eggs. But Jimmy's a pretty good cook too. And then Danny cooks for his family uh, because he's the first one home from work. So he always prepares the meals. So um, 
it's a skill. I realize that. Some people just don't have the skill. Like I said, my sister Sue, she tried. She really, really tried, but uh, not too many meals came up successful. But there was so much love in her meals that you can over you could overlook. You know, she put so much love into preparing her meals that you could overlook the, the taste sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. My favorite my favorite uh, thing of Susie's is she was a good baker. She was an excellent baker. <clears throat> there was nothing that she wouldn't bake that you didn't like, except for this one exception, this one time. She had us over for dinner, and she served chicken, which was raw. And I told her, I cannot eat this chicken. There's just no way. So we ate all the side dishes, which were, I'll be honest, edible. <laughs> She's not a good cook. But so we had everything but the chicken. And then she brought the dessert out. And this pie, she made an apple pie. It looked gorgeous. It looked like it should have been on the cover of a food magazine. And we cut into it and we took a big bite of the apple pie. Instead of using a quarter cup of sugar, she used a quarter cup of salt. She got her containers mixed up. It was awful. I couldn't even. But and so we teased her until the day she died. <laughs> well, let's make Susie bring apple pie so nobody will eat it. But anyway, uh, the recipe is for grilled curried shrimp skewers. Uh, I don't like shrimp. So uh, I will leave the recipe in the description box down below. It uh, is two points on the green and one on the blue and the purple. You need a cup, third of a cup of plain uh, Greek yogurt, some kosher salt, lemon juice, olive oil, curry power, cumin, coriander, garlic, ginger, and of course, the uh, shrimp. And if you want, you can put some chopped cilantro on top. But... Anyway, so let's learn how to cook. I mean, let's learn how to cook better sometimes too. In my case, let's learn how to cook healthier so we can lose that 5.8 pounds that you gained this week, Sandy. I didn't want to share it. I really, truly didn't want to share it, but I didn't share my weight last week, and I thought I have to share it this week. And I like to show my struggles. I think I'm like a lot of people out there that... Uh, it's kind of hard to go on vacation and come back. I, my goal was to come back with a main, with a main, maintaining. So just think if I went on vacation without even that goal. If I didn't even at least have the goal of maintaining, just think of how much more I could have gained and would have gained and should have gained probably. But um, anyway, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit that like button and share it if you think you might find somebody that might like it. Uh, check the links down below for all of those uh, channels that I mentioned. They have excellent recipes. Subscribe to them. Let them know that I sent you over. And uh, I promise you, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So um, until next week, unless I see you on my daily vlog, let's keep plugging away. Because you know what? I don't want to keep gaining. I want to start losing again. I want to get back up to 100 pounds. So now i got 25 pounds to go. Watch me do it before the end of the year.